everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 505, recorded on June 27, 2018. I'm Ryan Schrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walbreth. And I'm Ken Addison. Alan's still fired. We'll move on from that already. Uh, Alex is with us. Jim may be fired as well. I don't know what happens. A lot I haven't of times seen him in gone. weeks. Um, well, I chatted with him yesterday because he came in to pick up his camera and I'm his camera him. was still here. Oh yeah. So, well maybe whatever he had to take a picture of was only at night. <laughs> I don't have I just have the telephoto on it. So, mm. <laughs> we'll have to mm. ask about that. We'll have to ask about that. Welcome to the show everybody. Uh, we talk about PC hardware, PC hardware news, uh, things like CEOs leaving or new G-Sync monitors or um, you know, do we have that on here? The Corsair uh, yeah. buying just about everybody story type of thing? Yeah. Okay. That's on here. We're good. All right. Sounds good. Uh, welcome to the show. We do record on li- We record it live, and you can actually watch it live as we record it at pcper.com slash live. So live, live, pcper.com slash live. Very, I thought this it was is word live. association. This is pcper.com slash live. Yeah. I Either like one. <laughs> My goodness. I am I apologize. My child has allergies, and he's in the next room. Hey, me too. Oh, I thought that was you for sure. Yeah. No, no, that was that was, that was was my young child. All right, that's fine. Of 16 years old, so he's not really young anymore <laughs> and barely a child, but Definitely he can dying sneeze the loudly. Uh, first, first thing to note is that that picture is not hanging on the wall above your head uh, <laughs> from last week. Yes, Still right. update you the know, rendering. <laughs> like everything else in my life, it's been pushed to the side. That's and fair. my productivity has been garbage. Fair, fair. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So you can join us as we uh, uh, bicker before and post show as well. Uh, if you need a little reminder for that, if you want an email that says, oh, yeah, I forgot. PC Perspective is going live right now. You can sign up at pcper.com slash subscribe. It just asks for your name, your email address, and I send you a note an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, something along those lines before this show starts. And if we do any other live streams, like a couple of weeks ago, we had AMD out here to talk that about was FreeSync. Week. Was it last yeah. week? Yeah. I don't know what the hell day it is, uh, except that it's Wednesday, June 27th, because I can read it on a screen in front of me. <laughs> uh, but if pcpro.com slash subscribe, we don't use it for any any spam or anything like that. Use it for, for just for this stuff. So uh, check that out. We obviously still have our uh, Patreon campaign running. That is at patreon.com slash pcper. This is a place for you to be a recurring monthly subscriber, not subscriber, s- pro- provider, patron. Uh, I was trying to think of an alternative term, but this is your uh, uh, place if you want to say, hey, I like what you guys do. Here's a buck a month. Here's three bucks a month. Here's five, 10, 15 bucks. Uh, if you don't watch us live, you don't have time for that, your, your schedule doesn't allot for it, we do post the post show exclusive to patrons if you're a $3 a month or more patron, which by my math is about 75 cents an episode or so. Uh, we post that just as a, as a, you know, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 25 minutes. It depends on how tired and or drunk we might be at the <laughs> end uh, of that particular episode. Um, so again, patreon.com slash PC per. If you become a new patron and or increase your patronage, during the stream, I will thank you and call out your name uh, as we go. So thank you, everybody, for that. One of the things the Patreon allows us to do is the mailbag. Josh did uh, the mailbag this week. I I'm love, really sorry. I love Jim's titles. They are probably one of my favorite things about <laughs> this. Um, being Josh Walworth is, is here. So you can see Josh answer questions about, what would you answer questions about? Thunderbolt 3 built in the chipset. How about a new Threadripper? Um, hey, what what ThinkPads do you guys use during the podcast? Um, well, now it's rotated. Now, now, since now, the now past we've switched. Eight, six months. This Yoga, this is not a ThinkPad, but this uh, this is a Yoga nine hundred twenty, I think nine twenty. Yeah, that has been kind of our set studio laptop for a very long time. I have a ThinkPad. But look at those hinges. I know it's nice. I, I love ThinkPad. the watch yeah. band yeah. hinge. I had a ThinkPad here, <laughs> the ThinkPad X one, the fifth gen X one carbon. carbon. Um, that I have just recently swapped out for this Dell Latitude machine that I'm testing out. This is an 8th gen and 2-in-1. I've got this pen that I don't you know, do very much with. 
you know, <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, and you uh, had a you had a, a different a thing. T four seventy S is what I've been using for. And now the you past have an X two ten. Yes. Circa two thousand and eight or something like that. What's the, the infamous? No, the, infamous. So the X two ten never existed. Oh, okay. This is oh, the feel those keys. This yeah. is the hacked one that I bought. Could, could you could you could you type a little bit for me with those keys? Yes, yes. Oh, it's not the same. Oh, it's not the same. Uh, so we'll talk more about that on a future episode, probably. We've you've only yeah, had it for no, a couple of I, days. I got then, this so. on Tuesday. I'm kind of putting it through its paces. Uh, as it turns out, uh, maybe some thermal issues, maybe some battery issues to work through. Okay. Uh, it has a fully unlocked BIOS. It's like a debug BIOS. You can tweak literally everything you can ever imagine, which is unique on a notebook and yeah. semi-dangerous, as I've already found out. So, you know. PC per uh, merch, we have that available. Uh, it, actually, it's new. It's embedded in the videos on our YouTube channel. But if you go to joshtech.com, J-O-S-H-T-E-K-K, Com. You get this page here where you can buy Death Wish Raid, uh, Hot Dog Down a Hallway, Super Pipe. You can get the old classic PC Per t-shirt. Still the best-selling product of, uh, of, our, of our merch store. Plus, we have some mugs. We have the Josh Tech uh, sign. Josh, if you would be so kind as to hold up the, the Josh Tech print Look for me. Look how big this is. It's so big. And so lifelike. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, of course, we have the T-shirt, too, if you really want to wear that art around with you. I can't see why you wouldn't. I can't imagine that you wouldn't. Did I order one of these? Do I no. have one? I, I need to get Wait, one of these. yeah, you did. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. I haven't you ordered, seen it. You should wear it around, around, around the mug. wife will it's be very impressed. Here. It's probably here. Very so so that's, uh, that's the merch store, joshtech.com. Go there. Support merch. <laughs> I don't know. Support, Support this, Josh Tech. This mess. Uh, so let's get, into, let's get into the stuff. The first thing we're going to talk about is actually something we've been waiting for, talking about, um, debating for a really long time. We finally have the Asus ROG Swift PG27UQ. They first announced this in what, like 2012, 2013, it feels like at this point? <laughs> CS 2017 Ugh, is when we first ago. saw it. Uh, by the way, can I just say ROG Swift PG27UQ says literally nothing about the awesomeness or yeah, technology. Yeah, but they dropped a number from the old Swift. It is one character short. It's not the 279. But it's ultra oh. quality. <laughs> they, they don't want to be Acer, so they got to drop some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it just I don't know. Anyway, this is the 4K. But when's Gigabyte going to start making monitors? Because I their names do. will be epic. I think they <laughs> yeah. started that, Gigabyte but maybe not does. in North America. Yeah. I know MSI did. Yeah. Uh, so this is a 27-inch display. It's a 4K resolution. It is a G-Sync monitor, 144 hertz. So it's a 4K 144 hertz display. So that's obviously right out of the bat a big deal. Oh, sorry. As the top comment, the first commenter on the article would like you to know, it is UHD and not 4K. I, I, I hate people. people like that. Um, it is also HDR. And uh, spoiler alert, it's the best HDR we've seen thus, thus far. I would say better than the TVs. It's best desktop sized HDR display we've seen. Even you think, counting, you think that. the TVs are better? They're like, at least as good. Yeah. Like it, it, this is not the best HDR experience I've ever seen. It's on par with some of the best, but it it doesn't outclass a TV somehow. Yeah. Which is know. important to keep in mind. The uh, so this is what it looks like. It looks like you know a monitor. With it's, the Asus ROG stuff it, in the bottom. But it, it's thick. Like, look at those bezels compared to, mm -hmm. to normal. Or, like some of the new yeah. higher-end displays. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's kinda, it's got a stand. It's got an LED yeah. light at the that shines out the bottom of it that has the ROG it's logo. It's got underglow. It's got, you can project the <laughs> ROG logo on the wall behind you. It's got an illuminated yes. RGB. I turned all that crap off. Um, so in terms of specs, like I said, 27-inch panel, 97% DCI-P3 which is awesome, 4K, uh, brightness, 600 nits, typical 1,000 nits peak, 1,000 to 1 uh, contrast ratio, typical 50,000 to 1 in HDR mode. That's kind of that 1,000 nits coming into play there. Uh, you know, viewing angles, blah, 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 response time. A little bit, you know, people are used to 
uh, one millisecond for TN. This is this is IPS style. Uh, it is H IPS. It is IPS. Yeah. And and also I think just as important for the HDR is that it does have dynamic local dimming, 384 zones. That's a lot. And uh, it allows it to do a lot of interesting stuff. Also notice that the refresh rate is listed at 144 hertz, uh, but that's in its overclocked state. So there's a lot of weird things we can go into this. A lot I, of caveats. So let's start with the caveats so we can, we can end on some of the positives, right? So... <laughs> to run it in HDR mode, you are limited to 98 hertz refresh. To run in full 10-bit mode, you're limited to 98 hertz, whether it be okay. SDR or HDR mode. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, 10-bit. Okay. Yes. And this is a data rate issue with DisplayPort, essentially. Yeah. Right. So they didn't. They haven't implemented uh, Display Stream Compression, which is a feature of DisplayPort 1.4. We don't know whether it's because they couldn't or they didn't want to. Kind of ha Nvidia hasn't said either way on. Uh, hasn't commented on that, yeah. but it's not implemented in here, so we're limited to straight DP 1.4 uh, bandwidth limitations. So you can see Ken has here in his in his review 120 hertz for 8 bit RGB, 144 hertz, and it's overclocked 8 bit um, YUV 422 essentially. Yeah. Right. And then in HDR mode again, 98 hertz, 10 bit, 120 hertz, 8 bit RGB, <laughs> which is a dithered uh, mode supported. I guess added in RS4. In Windows 10, and then 128, 120 hertz 10 bit at 422, and 144 hertz overclocked at uh, 422 as well. Yeah. So, so nice and easy. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's complicated. And here's the thing for me looking at this, I would just leave it at 98 hertz. It's a G Sync that, monitor. That's what we did for the majority of our testing because we were more yeah. interested in HDR compatibility than anything else because 120 hertz display. Like a 4K 120 hertz display is a relatively well known thing, whether it's running in 422 or I don't think it's a relatively -known. well known thing. I th isn't well, this like no, the like, first? Well, 4K. It's, it's easier to understand. So oh, if, sure. you, if you understand how a 1440p yeah. monitor behaves at 120 hertz, also if you're going to do 4K gaming, similar. the chances of you're hitting 120 to 144 frames per second pretty minimal already. Um, today, today, correct. but this is an expensive piece of hardware that you would keep for a while. In it is expensive, in fact. It is two thousand dollars. We've talked about this before when the prices started leaking out. It is a two thousand dollar monitor, just like the Acer version of it is. We'll wait to the end to decide uh, how we talk about the value of that. It is uh, Visa Display HDR one thousand certified. The Asus model is. Um, I think this is the first time we've ever seen that certification actually hit anything, right? No, there's For a, a monitor. There's at least. Phillips 43 inch oh, okay. display, which they advertise as a monitor, a gaming monitor. Got it. Okay. They advertise it as a gaming monitor? I believe so. Oh, okay. 43 is right on the edge where you can't entirely call bullshit on that yet. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, in terms of like form factor, it's it's nice. It, it's not fantastic. It's it's a little bit. I don't know. I, I would I would say the design and the build feels a little bit underwhelming for the price tag right it's still like a plastic bezel but it's matte finish you can make it fancier looking if you made it gloss but you don't want it to be gloss yeah so there's it's, there's a lot of trade-offs but it just kind of looks like a regular rog swift it just two thousand the, the, the dollars well not the build it it feels less designed than the original swift yeah like the original swift was it could be thinner because it didn't have to have this insane sort of new backlight technology and had like it just felt a little nicer build quality like this. Yeah. Got that light in the back, though. It doesn't feel like a $2,000 monitor from the outside. Yeah, that's fair. I can't, I can't quite put my finger is it, on is it. Is that RG but... logo RGB? Yeah. Hell yeah. Which you can control for. You can control all the lighting from the monitor OSD, which is nice because you can immediately turn it It's a good light. OSD. It's fast. It's easy to navigate around with that joystick, right? Yeah, I was actually surprised at how well you can navigate through it. It, it made a whole lot of sense, which is really rare for a monitor <laughs> OSD. Fair. Uh, it's got HDMI input, DisplayPort input, USB, you know, um, hub essentially. In terms of HDMI versus DisplayPort, G Sync still only over DisplayPort. Correct. But we did HDR gaming on the Xbox through the HDMI port, right? Yeah, you get four full 4K 60 HDR gaming or video playback through the HDMI port. It's not limited at all, which I was really glad to see. We were had some conversation going back and forth on if we thought they would bother implementing that. And they did, which is great. Uh, you hook an Xbox One up to it, uh, yeah. Xbox One, Xbox One X. You can do 
like UHD playback, UHD Blu-ray playback, which is a little bit more difficult on a PC. Right. If you already have a device like an Xbox. The uh, there were there was a video that came out a couple weeks ago about the Acer version of this monitor mm-hmm. that had a fan in it that was really loud because they had Visa mounted it flush with something. And the design of that particular monitor was in such a way, we haven't actually seen that in person yeah. yet, kind of cut off ventilation. Yes, so the, the Visa plate that Acer includes in the box essentially butts up directly to the back of the monitor, which is where the intake for the blower fan is, Yeah, which is obviously not a good idea. That's However, sub- suboptimal. Asus, as we're showing here, has some standoffs that mount yeah. The, the, just the standoffs of the Visa mounting points, and you can add whatever monitor arm yep. you have, like we did in that photo there. And it keeps a nice sort of pocket of airflow, so you can do intake. It didn't get loud when hooked up to a Visa mount. Speaking so, of, yeah. so this is the inside of it. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 words, words, words. Uh, that's the control board for it, and you can kind of see now, oh, yeah, that's a fan. That's a pretty beefy fan, and it, that's a pretty big heat sink. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, this control board is no joke. It is not. No. It is not. Underneath that I'm heat not sink laughing and fan, at it. here we are. That's uh, an Altera Aria 10. That's like a that's FPGA. like a GPU. It's with like memory. size wise. It's yeah. a it's a thirty five by thirty five centimeter package, I believe. Centimeter. <laughs> Millimeter. <laughs> no, yeah, that's better. Yeah, no, he's just talking about the pa- wait. He's I'm about talking the package. about the heat spreader, not the yeah. die. Yeah, it's not thirty five centimeters. That's a big die. That is a big die. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They don't teach the metric. They don't teach the teach the metric system in America. How many inches is it? Catch? <laughs> how many inches it is? Uh, how many quarters do you fit on that dot? Yeah, this is the only way I can visualize. How it. many miles? Um, so, the, how much memory did we cite? Is there three the, gigs? The three DDR4 four twenty four hundred. Three or six? Three. Three gigabytes of GDDR four or DDR four. DDR4 2400, I believe. DDR4 2400. So uh, a healthy amount of memory. That FPGA, like we did some, you know, you can't price these things. NVIDIA is not paying the retail price from Mauser for these FPGAs, <laughs> but it was $2,600 for this yeah. for this particular FPGA from Which, Mauser. It isn't a stocked item from them. It's a special order. They only had, that was quantity three pricing, so $2,600 a pop for if you were just buying three. Obviously, NVIDIA is buying more than three, but <laughs> maybe it still seems like a healthy chunk of change. It is. And, and we were trying to get information from NVIDIA on, uh, okay, how much is this module costing cost you to cost your partners, yeah. to charge your partners, whatever it is? Like, how significant of a portion of the $2,000 comes from this module versus the LCD? And NVIDIA it's... told me that... The vast majority was the LCD, and we sure. were we. They said we were over exaggerating the value of the FPGA, but nobody would give me any numbers. Yeah. So I'm kind of just left with I don't know. It looks pretty expensive, uh, though. The, the one of the places I kind of started basing that number off of was the DigiKey Mouser stuff, and then also if you take sort of the storied three hundred dollar price premium for original G-Sync, and you start to look at what FPGA they used in that, mm-hmm. it's obviously a way lower cost device. And you start to do a little bit of math, the $2,000 monitor, yeah. quantity breaks. That's kind of where I got in about the $500 and Memory, range. as it turns out, is not cheap. No. Getting three gigs of, of memory is going to add to that. The last module had 768 megabytes of memory, um, the, the original G-Sync module. So I, I'm still curious to see. I want, you know, I want to get Tom's ass back out here. <laughs> Let's talk about what this is, what it does. What do you need three gigabytes of memory for? I always thought 768 was pretty high on that mm-hmm. on that um well, what's the tdp on that fpga uh that's not really a it's number not listed you, you get it depends on what your workload yeah. is right and like it's, how it's you super configured variable. it um, well, I, you know i'm looking at the heat sink based on the fan i would i would say that's a <laughs> that's a 45 watt part yeah uh, uh, let's scroll back down to the fpga you can actually see you could see right above the fpga the power delivery which actually had a thermal pad over it even so, I mean, it was pumping out these pieces here. Yeah, so it's two phase. Uh, wow. Yeah, looks like it. That's that's no joke. Yeah, I was shocked when I pulled that's the heat spreader off so, this yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Well, one phase probably for the memory. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot going on here, and we don't really know anything about it, and we're just kind of just learning about it. Um, we can't say for you know, sure. Somebody, like, somebody mentioned something. Okay, what sure. you don't wow. know. 
yeah, is that uh, they've improved the uh, the DisplayPort functionality so that when you turn your monitor on, it it actually starts mining bitcoins. Ah, okay. <laughs> for Nvidia, I wonder uh, why the profit margins are as, as bad as they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so, so mm-hmm. interesting point. That fan turns on the minute you plug the monitor in. Like the the monitor has a boot up sequence that takes a decent amount of time because it's booting this FPGA. Like yeah. booting. I mean, obviously yeah. it's Gatlin. It's, it's, not it's, a, it's really interesting. I want to learn more about it. I'm going to have to bug some people about it. So we'll, we'll f- never we'll learn f- more about that's it. That's true. Fair enough. Um, so let's talk about what it's actually like to using it. HDR support in Windows is still not perfect, but it's way better now than it was when we first started getting HDR TVs in and we're hooking them up. Uh, honestly, RS4. at this point, it seems to be some sort of display dependent issue, whereas some of the HDR PC monitors that we've looked at with like display HDR 600 and 400 do this weird thing where if you turn on HDR mode on the desktop, it just washes out. But having spent time with this monitor and the Samsung Q6 TV TV. that we talked about last week, Mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. So it seems like there may be some sort of like driver monitor. The driver sort of of it. The OS now has the HDR SDR mode. So like, but it's had that since RS3. But maybe it just didn't work. Well, I don't know. I've, I've tried it in RS4, and it's also been bad on these same displays. Okay. So it isn't an RS4 thing as Chrome much. still has that bug? Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah, the Chrome still had a bug where it was very dim if you had oh, the operating system in HDR mode. Every other window was fine, but, you know, they'll, they'll fix that. I think it had, it had already been addressed in a Chromium thing. So in general, your desktop experience should be as good as normal. But you've got a really high quality screen here to go along with it. In terms of gaming, um, this isn't one of those things that it's impossible for me to show you a picture or a video <laughs> if you don't have an HDR screen to play it back on. And even then, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. So, like, you can, if you have an HDR screen, you can watch HDR videos on YouTube, but I have no idea what kind of conversion they're doing, you yeah. know, in order to map it to whatever your particular display is on the fly. And interestingly enough, we ran into this. If you're in HDR mode while gaming or in the desktop or anything and use GeForce Experience, it produces a image that is tone mapped to HDR. So if you go to display it on an <laughs> SDR display, it looks blown out. Yeah. So this they is why we're doing that conversion back. This is why we have f- pictures from a iPhone 10. Yeah. As screenshots instead of taking screenshots because we were taking screenshots, they were in HDR mode, and then we were trying to like tone map them back to SDR, and they just looked bad. They didn't really represent what we were trying to show. This kind of does, right? You can, again, we're not going to be able to tell it, but there, there is a significant difference between the HDR gaming I've done on this monitor and the HDR gaming I've done on other displays thus far. Mm-hmm. Right, the, you can actually see in the blacks while still being out in the sunlight. It looks, but they still look really nice and black. It, does. it looks incredible. It, it really yeah. does. The the brightness. I know a lot of people say like, oh, you don't want a thousand nits, you're going to get eye cancer and all this type of stuff. But it's the that it's the ability to spike that high that makes the contrast so amazing. Like the opening scene, once you get past the opening cut scenes of Destiny 2, you are not this particular screenshot, but you're in an area where it's very dark outside, but there are things all around you that are on fire. And it's a amazingly perfect demonstration of HDR right out of the bat because you can look at all the areas that are uh, hidden from that firelight in the darkness, you can see the brightness of the fire. One of my favorite examples, I don't know if, I can, if I'll be able to zoom in on this picture or if it will even matter. Um, yeah, it doesn't really show here. Oh, I don't think I have the right gun on it. But th- there's a red dot sight on one of the guns in Far Cry 5 that even if you're in, if you're in dark foliage and you have that red dot on, that red dot is like piercingly bright as it would be in real life, Yeah. right? And... It's it's great. Like so, this is all blown out, and, and and Far Cry Five has some great effects when you're going from indoors to outdoors, where you get a bloom, and it doesn't feel faked. Um, although it is, I would say, what did I call it in this in this text? Like maybe a little bit exaggerated of an effect than what you would see in real life. Um, but not as bad as like Half Life Two Episode Three, right? Or uh, where it was uh, just obscene when lo- you walked out of a building. Wait, did they make an episode three? I don't think they did. No, no, no it was the Lost <laughs> Wait a minute, Coast. Wait, what did you Lost Tech Demo. The Lost Coast Tech Demo. <laughs> yeah, whichever Lost one Coast. that was. Yeah, Lost Coast. I want to say the number three for some reason. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Um, 
you know, so so I played Destiny 2, we played Far Cry 5, we played Assassin's Creed Origins, we played the original, not the original, but the Hitman from 2015. Okay, that's a little blown out. Well, that's just, we we're just showing the settings there. Like, the, the games need to have support for this as well to do it right. The Hitman one is very subdued. You could tell uh, that it had HDR capability in it, but, but on Destiny 2, it was a, immediately obvious. And if you went and turned off HDR and went back to SDR... It, f- it looked bad. It wasn't bad, but it just <laughs> felt that way because what you had just seen prior to it. And the, the, the game setting side of this is still a real big issue. Yeah. Like they don't use, they don't, don't all use the same terminology. Some don't have the same settings. Ideally, you want the to be able to set the max brightness and the paper white brightness. And the paper white kind of representing the dimmest bright white. Yeah. For whatever that and, and means. So the... Uh, the PG27UQ actually has a setting in the OSD where you can set the paper white level and it defaults mm. to 80 nits. So actually, I think Assassin's Creed would only let us go down to 100 nits. So you could increase that in the monitor and still kind of stay in this right tone map region. Mm. But okay. it's just a lot of variability with there screwing is. with the settings and games still. There needs to be some sort of common API for this to figure out it's very much what a, your display uh, can do. It's very much an ecosystem that needs that developer relations work between the developer and AMD and NVIDIA to say yeah. like, Hey, here's what we're doing. But you like know, AMD and NVIDIA don't, aren't going to like, aren't really agreeing on color space. Like AMD is no, kind of pushing their own thing with FreeSync to HDR. But they're going, this with HDR this, 10. they're going with display standards, you know, 600. No, but that's not, that's not a, that's not like HDR 10 is not part of that. Uh, yeah. Is HDR 10 a part of G-Sync HDR? HDR 10 is just a protocol. Okay. And like this monitor supports HDR10, and then FreeSync 2 HDR has its like sort of own option, which we saw in Far Cry as an option. Oh it's, yeah, the SCRGB or whatever. It's yeah, confusing. It's, yeah. So, um, so you're saying that it's going to take five years for me to actually be able to buy a monitor because I'm not willing to compromise on pretty much anything. I'm what do you, saying, what you especially price? On? Okay, price. Yes. I'm saying probably don't buy this monitor right now. Yeah, so we did some color accuracy stuff. Accuracy stuff. Read that page. Uh, well, I'm measuring more HDR is on very that in the hard. Next couple of days. Um, backlight testing, whatever. R- read that. I-, I think the the conclusion here for me is this is easily the best monitor I've ever gamed on. Like it's not really even close. It 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 works. It shows HDR. Real, real HDR. Impressive HDR can work in this size form factor in desktop size. Yeah. It costs a lot of money right now. There's still some software issues, but when would, it works, it works really well, and you'll never want to go back. I would also like to see this as a 32-inch monitor. A 27-inch 4K is kind of like, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's a stretch, especially at this price range, that you would want to see that bigger. And obviously, NVIDIA and, and Asus are at the whim of what the panel would, manufacturers were planning to would, make. Would you say it, it kind of burns your... Retina? No, I wouldn't. That would be dumb. Oh. I I, I kind of just was thinking about this while we we're talking about it. I would rather have good. this display minus G Sync than a hundred forty four or four K hundred forty four hertz G Sync monitor. You would rather have the HDR than the G Sync. Yes, essentially. Uh, yes, I would. Yes, I would agree with that. Now, here's something else I didn't even, I didn't even mention. The G-Sync still just works, right? As it yeah. turned out, like, we didn't have any tearing issues. We didn't have any stutter issues. We only went up to 98, but we were playing at 4K. So we were, you know, our frame rates were more in the 40 to 70 range to begin with. Um, Albeit we did have a 1080 Ti installed. We were using a 1080 Ti. But if you're buying if a $2,000 bu- monitor, you have a $700 yeah. video card. Yeah. Don't, yeah. I mean, whatever. <laughs> you, you can do whatever you want. But um, Okay, so well, let me ask one thing real yeah, quick. Yeah, please. From just the eyeball test, HDR on this versus HDR on that big ass Samsung thing, comparable. Really? Yes. You know, I would, s- as the owner of an LG OLED. Yeah. I don't know if it's because of the proximity to the monitor, because the monitor is closer to me than my TV is when I'm watching TV. But to me, the monitor feels more impressive. Like the brights are brighter. The monitor is also I- matte. That's true, as opposed to gloss. And the, and I can see the detail in the darks because I'm closer to that image as opposed to when yeah. I'm further away. 
it's you know even though it's a bigger screen, it's a 65 inch TV or whatever. I, I don't know what that what that ratio is. Yeah. There's something about it to me that this feels like the best HDR implementation. Now, color wise and and measurement wise, that may prove out to not be the case. It could be yeah. that the that the Samsung TVs and the LG TVs are actually a bit better at it. But it, I, I think at the very least. It's comparable to what we saw. Like the the reason HDR was so exciting is you'd go to these demos at CES and at these tech conferences and and these tech days and you, they'd you know AMD would have this big TV and they'd be showing a star field of the dark and then they'd yeah. pan over and you'd go past the sun or a, a moon or something. It was so impressive, and all the monitors we've really seen up until this this point have been. Better than standard, but not like I kept going. Yeah, but my TV does this better. We, we couldn't quite tell if it was working. A lot of times was the big issue. Where yeah. you don't, you do With not have HDR that six hundred based. Yeah. Well, it, 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 even it, before that, before well, they even yeah. started adhering With to that. With the slash yard, if you know what you're looking for, you can tell, and it's impressive in some scenes. Like if you're if you're walking outside and the game like is blowing out the screen essentially as your iris adjusts and you and you and it changes the exposure. Like you can tell that stuff, but there was absolutely no question as to whether or not HDR was working, and even the littlest details. Yeah, on this display, it's I you know I'm I'm torn on this because I do think it's the best gaming monitor that we've had here, but it's I think God, no one should buy it. God, it's so expensive. <laughs> it's so expensive. And I'm trying to think back. If you look back at the first 4K monitor we had, what was the two Display Port? Yeah, and it was the uh, what the hell was that called? Well, they didn't they, they they split the screens yeah they didn't always work and it was a 32 inch yeah the asus panel asus and somebody else had like sharp sharp no, no, no it was that it was that strange korean brand wasn't it no we had we had a 4k tv there but the first 4k monitor yeah yeah was but the, it, that was it, HMI. the this, first 4k monitor was the sharp like medical grade professional yeah. one that asus, asus rebranded yeah and that was yeah. like three grand wasn't it that's what i was gonna ask i think but, i was gonna say it's like 2400 yeah so you know, we're, we're kind of in that same ballpark. We probably had the exact same recommendation back then. This is the best monitor you could buy, but maybe don't buy it yet. <laughs> probably. Um, if you're if you're the person that buys a Titan XP, or maybe two Titan XPs, because you're just that kind of guy, or one or Titan gal, Five. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a V. It's not a Titan Five. It should be five. Titan, Sorry. Titan Five was the rocket. Titan V is the graphics card. That's how you know they didn't steal the name. Yeah. Um, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh, then, then maybe this is this is the thing to to do, right? Is yeah. is to is to buy one of these types of monitors, this I, Asus display. But I think I, I think my mm. perfect display would be this quality HDR in 1440p at 144 hertz, four thousand bucks. I think that would be the absolute no brainer. For, wait, wait, say that again for four thousand dollars. 1440p. Uh -huh. HDR 1000 G Sync for a thousand bucks. A thousand. I thought you said for four thousand. I was confused. Uh, for a thousand bucks, yeah, I'd do that. I think that's semi reasonable. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's making that panel right now or developing that panel. Yeah. But so uh, we talked about this for a long time. Go read the review. I think it's it's going to be one of those things. I hate I hate like this is the best possible thing. But not many of you should buy it, right? And that's and that's kind of where we're at with like, you know, again, this is the Titan XP of monitors. This is the 1080 Ti of monitors. It's you probably shouldn't buy this because if you're gaming at 1080p or 1440p, the 1070 is gonna be fine. Save your money, do this. But if you want the best of the best, this is yeah. it. Uh, it does set an interesting precedent for all other HDR monitors that we look at. <laughs> Yeah, coming out right now. To be fair, like the FreeSync two HDR monitors are, we're going to see are not going to be two thousand dollars. They might be six hundred dollars. Yeah, and in which case, we don't expect it to have the same type of quality and capabilities. But will it be good enough to impress us for that dollar amount? That's, I think that's there's the a question. much sweeter spot than this achieves. This is going boss to the wall. I think you can achieve a much more reasonable experience yeah. for a way cheaper price. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, we'll quickly get into some stuff, we'll run through this. Chris posted a review of the Logitech G305 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse from, from Logitech. I think I already said that. Um, this is this is pretty, pretty straightforward. This is a $60 wireless. It's using their new Hero sensor, which is their low power sensor that allows it to go extreme, go to extremes on battery life. So, uh, Logitech claims the battery life is between 250 hours and nine months on this, depending on if you do it in the high sensitivity mode or the standard sensitivity mode uh, for that, <laughs> which 
uh, is, and I think this only uses one AA battery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, single AA battery for up to nine months. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I like seeing that. It does have a 32-bit ARM microprocessor in there. It does not everything Ooh. these days. Yeah, this is true. This is true. They're rather inexpensive. It's a pretty it's a pretty basic design. It's uh it's an ambidextrous It looks cheap. Design. It kind of does. It it's, looks like it feels super light. I don't know if it does, but it looks like it, it feels super light. It is pretty light. It weighs a in under those 80 grams. Are like that. It's they like almost all mouse. feel light and flimsy. Th- yeah. This is this is a desktop sized mouse. With though, the battery correct? 99 really? grams. Really? I assumed it was small. I, don't, I think this is no. It's it's kind of your it's kind of a normal size. mouse size. Eh, oh, maybe it's a take little it back. Smaller. It's a, it might be a little bit smaller, but it's it's fairly normal sized. Actually, yeah, this is the one that I put in my backpack because it has a place. It has good my God, backpack. It has the place <laughs> to put the wireless sensor inside the it mouse. It sure does. Oh, thank the George. <laughs> um, but like I said, it's ambidextrous except it's only got you know thumb buttons on one side. Sorry, all the lefties out there. Um, what if it's amphibious? Mm, I don't know how long it can hold Only its breath Only if you wrap it in rubber first. Yeah. Or, you know, anything else to that degree. Right. Um, check out the review of that. It, like I said, it's a light speed, so the wireless stuff we know works very well. We've seen this in other mice. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Chris has used a lot of mice and keyboards, so he's going to give yeah. you a good opinion of that. I think it was actually – I'll click on this link. I think it was a lot lower. A little cheaper. Than, uh, it looks like the sale is over mm-hmm. now. But it was you know, 52 or $50 or something like that uh, just a little bit ago. So Look at that LED, though. Yeah, no LED lights under the logo. That's, how again, how you get to that. No, it's got one LED. Well, it's got the indicator LED. Yeah. Let you know See? what sensitivity LED. mode you're in, but this does not illuminate. Is what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah, you, that's how nine it, months wouldn't get you much. Uh, correct, correct. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't click on that for you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get a little bit of that vibe. All right, so check out that review. Uh, let's get into some news stuff. Uh, I've put in Josh's application for CEO at Intel. You know, I don't want to be CEO. I mean, I, oh. I appreciate the money, but what I want to be. <laughs> yeah, I bet. What do you want to be? Is yeah. under the I desk. want to be on the board. So buy up that Intel stock. Vote for me this next year, and I'll be on the board. Yeah, probably. And I happen. can help God. Also take over. Whoever the new CEO is. <laughs> to where it needs to be. Uh, so Lord. the reason Lord. Josh would even put in his application for this job is that Brian Krasanich has been fired slash quit, you know, forcefully resigned. Whatever happens in today's world, nobody actually ever gets fired. They just resign. Uh, at, service at service point. People get fired. <laughs> Yesterday was the last day of his employment. Yes. Oh, it was? Okay. It wasn't effective no, no, immediately? No, 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 no. That's, that's the excuse. The, oh, the day sure. after he was fired, right. they announced yesterday was right. so-and-so's last day of employment. We Got wish it. them well in their future well, endeavors. It's like, it's like how you fire da, da, someone da. on a Friday so they don't burn the office down for <laughs> the, uh, and, uh, uh So BK left. Uh, he's gone. He's fired. He had uh, essentially an affair with an employee years ago before he was a CEO but now they found out about it, and so they're like, yeah, this is a convenient excuse to get rid of a guy that has been controversially responsible for some headaches that Intel's been dealing with. It's an, it's an awkward thing to talk about, Josh, because they made a ton of money while he was CEO. But is the question, would they have made tons more had somebody else you know, been I, at the helm? I, 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 Okay, you know, that is a good question. I don't think that they would have made tons more because where they're at, they had better process technology, they had better design, they had better execution on 14 nanometer than their competition. I think they maximized their potential in terms of margins and, uh, and, and the amount of processors they are actually able to ship really, really nicely. The problem is... 10 nanometer is bad. They should feel their, bad. <laughs> their designs <laughs> have been ported back to 14 nanometer plus, 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 and possibly plus, plus, plus. They do not include any of the next generation type things to improve performance that were originally designed for 10 nanometer. And we have one 10 nanometer part out here. 
And would you say that it is overperforming or underperforming? I, I have no idea, but uh, it's a two core, n- no GPU part. So chances are it's bad. Not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not good. Uh, there are two, you know, trains of thought here. One, 10 nanometer is, it can be fine. The things we just got to work out and tweak it and everything's fine. The others are, it's fundamentally unsound and you will never get it to work at the levels you need it to be. I, I am of two minds of this. Mm. I think in its current configuration, it probably will never meet the benchmarks they need it to. But there are many things that they can do because, you know, process technology is, is like science and alchemy combined. It's really absolutely bizarre until, until they see how something works and can quantify it. It's like they, they don't really know if, if, it will work or not. I mean, there's theory and obviously theory to reality for Intel broke down somewhere and they need to take the reality and make adjustments and see what comes out. And I, you know, everybody can be a critic because it's easy to say you done screwed up, but yeah, I, I don't know where that they really are going to go. I mean, they, they now have two options. One, fix 10 nanometer or scrap it entirely and just focus on 7 nanometer and try to learn the lessons that they got from 10 nanometer. I mean, they threw a bunch of technologies at 10 nanometer. I mean, uh, cobalt, uh, I can't remember all of the other different, you know, gate features that, that they had. Sure. Um, but it just... It was a lot of stuff, and it was all in a very, very tight package. And if you look at the physical dimensions, 10 nanometer is still tighter overall than the competition 7 nanometer parts like TSMC. Okay. But if they can't make it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because, you know, if your yields are crap and the products you make are extremely simple – People who can leverage, you know, 12 nanometer, which is, you know, Samsung, uh, Samsung's Global Foundries, well, Global Foundries, you know, enhanced 14 nanometer stuff. Uh, hmm. If you can put out parts at will and still be able to, you know, compete with Intel at their 14 plus plus, then Intel's losing money. They're, they, they, they do not have command of the uh, the market that they previously did because – Essentially, the playing level, the the playing field is level right now. Yep. And it's going to get worse for Intel in 2019. So, yeah, they've made a boatload of money in 2017 and 2018. 2018 is going to close out very, very strong for them because they still have very good parts out. They're, they are, they're keeping their margins. They still have all the customers that they have. But 2019 is is going to be an inflection point because AMD will have seven nanometer parts. Intel will not have 10 nanometer stuff. They will still have to rely on 14 nanometer plus, 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 whatever they decide to do. AMD is going to have a density um, advantage over Intel, and that is going to be huge for data center. I don't think that AMD is going to take over data center, but no. potentially they could take upwards of 10% of Intel's really high margin, high end, mm-hmm. big money data center with their Epic processors, especially so, at 7 nanometer. So let's not try to guess who will replace them. That's, there's just too many names we'd just be guessing. Do you think... What changes when you have a successor, right? And I guess part of this question is impossible to answer until you know who the successor is. Um, do we see any shift in direction for what they're doing, right? If you look, they have where they're at on the desktop CPU side, where they're at on the server CPU side, where they're at on mobile, where they're at on AI. Do they, you know, FPGAs, do they change anything? And this, is, this is actually the second big loss for them or removal of somebody because they also got rid of their CMO like what, a month ago, two months yeah. ago who was kind of responsible for the Hey Drones uh, initiative that <laughs> Intel had um, which they're still involved in a little bit for cool light shows. I just I don't understand what the hell that does for them. But um, 
what changes? Do you see any changes from this, Josh, Jeremy, anybody? <sighs> you know, I, I don't know if there will be any changes, but if it were me, I would focus on design and try to <sighs> try to distance itself from manufacturing. And so what that means is you need to design the structures that will push data through whatever and try to keep that. And maybe I'm just talking about my bad, but try to keep that ag as agnostic as possible from manufacturing. Now, yeah, it's hard to do because Intel design and manufacturing have just been so tightly interwoven. And that is one of the reasons why they have had the success that they have through the years, because those things were so close together and they were able to really match the characteristics of, of manufacturing with the actual design. And so, but, but in the end design is going to be everything we can look through, you know, especially with the 28 nanometer stuff. I mean, we were stuck on that process node for ages. We could see what NVIDIA did with design and kind of out of the box thinking from their three generations that they had on that process node yeah. and how the latest generation was really high performance, really good power efficiency. I mean, they really optimized and, and I, it's just design is really key. Intel has amazing design facilities. They've got a huge amount of R and D. They got to figure out how to be able to survive hiccups in process technology and still implement really good designs that will still retain much of the margin that they have right now. I think that's tough to do. I, th I think, yeah, it's, it's, they, it's, they've basically been tough. functioning for the entirety of my existence in this market um, with a 18 month, 24 month advantage on process technology over their competitor. And this was the case, even when AMD owned its own foundries, um, we're kind of at the point now, essentially where that's gone. That lead is vanished. It's neck and neck. Some people argue, you know, TSMC's ahead. I argue that we don't know yet until we see actual TSMC silicon coming out and how it performs uh, based on expectations. But uh, it, it's going to be a very different Intel now who has to compete, as you're saying, on product design, not on process design, right? So Because the last 50 years, they have had advantages in process technology. You know, yeah. real man-owned fabs, right? That's right. And Intel has <laughs> been right. the, they have set the bar for fabs and they have more clean space than pretty much anybody else in, in, in our known universe. It's probably wrong, but anyway, <laughs> it's a big universe. Uh, but yeah, until recently no. now, you know, people are saying, well, they should sell off their fabs and go. Yeah. Their fabs. It's like, no, that, that, that does not who work. Who could even buy them? Their, yeah. Kim yeah. was going to say that. <laughs> who could even buy them? No, the Chinese? no. And you don't want to give that kind of. If you could afford fabs, you want to keep them because you have a granular control over your product that yeah. your comp competition does not. Th they already do design have... your 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 you design your cell and you match it as closely as possible to that manufacturing and you then design the chip around that standard cell. And it's all hand uh, design essentially I mean, it's like 90, 85 to 8, 90 percent hand laid um, design versus automated at mm. Intel, I mean, AMD, which is hugely automated yeah. because they just don't yeah. have they don't have the engineers artisanal they can't afford to pay them. CPU layout. Yeah, <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say that's, earlier. That's, that's more my concern. <laughs> like, are we going to see one of the the newer style management come in? That's all right, well, who even cares if we can't beat them on process tech? Only nerds care about that. We need to turn this into the Intel experience. We need to sell the brand. It doesn't matter that the processor doesn't do things. We can make it sound amazing. And that's the way that we have to push because we had a huge lead and we were wonderful, but now we've got to grow in a different way. And I've seen a lot of companies sort of go that way recently. And a lot of feedback from people were just saying, you know, it's no, it's all about the experience. It's about the feeling you have when you buy it not what the actual product is. It combines yeah. some services with it, and it will be wonderful. <laughs> Come on, that's why Lamborghini still is, you know, still yeah. afloat. What were you going to say, Ken? They can't sell their fabs because they're already 
at full utilization of 14 nanometer. They had to stop production on some chipsets because mm. chipsets are on 14 nanometer now because they thought they were going to be on 10, so it was safe to produce chip design and produce chipsets on 14. They, they, just, they can't sell the fabs because they're the only ones that, like, they need the... the uh, and nobody has the fab space outside of Intel yeah. to be able to handle that kind of, let's yeah. let's dump out, you know, 100,000 away for a month on, on some third party. Come on, UMC. It's not happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. You so always that's... wanted to step up there. <laughs> <laughs> There's BK News. Uh, we'll talk about this more once they pick whoever the replacement is going to be. Uh, like I said, I put in Josh's thing. I put in mine. I would leave you guys for $28 million a year just so we're all on the same page. Well, mm. now we know what we're worth. <laughs> it's probably less than We have a rough estimate. Um, <laughs> Dream. Right. Before we get in the next story, we do have a uh, a couple of new patrons. We have a five dollar patron from Jeff Cook. Thank you very much, Jeff, for that. And uh, Mur M I R Mur is uh, Mur. in there for a dollar. He was able to log in. There you go. So he also has uh, some Intel stocks, and and he's going to vote for me for for the board oh, membership. Damn. I only That's have one hundred fifteen k a year. I only have that one AMD stock. One share. <laughs> but I do get to vote with that, I think, still. Although I bet they don't have my information anymore. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. we got a lot of other crap to get to here. We'll run through a little bit quicker. Uh, rumors are coming out about a Qualcomm Snapdragon 1000 series part. Let me go ahead and translate this from that language into some semblance of English. Um, <laughs> that is basically going to be is a bigger, quote, big ARM chip for Windows 10 PCs, all the you know speculation here that kind of makes sense is that it would be based on the ARM Cortex A76 design, which is something ARM has claimed would have laptop level performance, you know, targeting hmm, Core i5, U series level performance. Um, I just so, seem like something uh, Qualcomm would be interested in. At right, all. exactly. So apparently, there's like a developer system that's been out. Uh, that some people have seen. It's running at 12 watts instead of 6.5 watts. It has 16 gigs of memory on there, uh, two 128 gig uh, UFS storage mm, systems. Still UFS still storage. UFS. That's a massive disappointment. Yeah, gigabit uh, wireless, obviously. Um, some kind of new power management chip as well to go along with it. You know, there's speculation here that all oh, this is a really big package for this part. It's also socketed. Will, will we see that as a as a how the Snapdragon 1000 would come out? And I think that's kind of crazy. This is clearly just a development platform. You would never want, you would never be able to put a socketed package into a thin and light two in one yeah. convertible. It also takes away the advantage Qualcomm has on PCB spacing, which is one of their big selling points. Yeah, but it sounds like that advantage is going to be somewhat gone anyways. Well, the I think ARM ARM has said publicly for its A76 that its entire core that that apparently comes within 10% of the IPC of Skylake yeah. fits inside the caches for Skylake. Hmm. Right? So they're going to have a huge die space advantage still unless, you know, Qualcomm puts 16 cores in here yeah. or something uh, like this that. This article is like about 20 by 15 millimeters, not centimeters for the package, <laughs> which is it's still, I mean, it, compared to a Snapdragon 850 It'll be sizable, but it's still yeah. it's small. Yeah. Um, so there's not a whole lot of other detail than that. Uh, but let's see. Oh, they also apparently have a confirmation through a chip manufacturer on LinkedIn talking about the Qualcomm. It's almost like no one should use LinkedIn. SDM 1000. <laughs> oh, I worked on these chips that aren't launching for a year and a half. It's always I worked on my... these products that aren't launching because I need to build my resume and I've been doing this for Microsoft two years. Microsoft Windows Multimedia Project Engineer overseeing managed test operations on Qualcomm Snapdragon Premium Tier SDM 845 and SDM 1000 for desktop, Oops. Andromeda, and HoloLens AR VR mixed reality products. Mm, interesting. Mm. They mentioned that product for uh, HoloLens lens, eh? It's uh, also interesting. And Andromeda, which is that two-screen Microsoft uh, uh, project that they're working on, right? Man, I tell you what, LinkedIn is a great source of uh, fantastic information for this. So... Yes? Should that title be named X Qualcomm employee well, now? Yeah. <laughs> so, Josh, based on what we know about A75... 76. 70, 76. Uh -huh. 76 is the one that's coming out. Yeah. And their timelines, where do we think this would 
lie because they've already announced Snapdragon 850 for Windows PCs. It would seem odd to it's coming out this fall to soon after release a much higher end part when they don't even really have a segment carved out yet. You'd think you'd want to lead with the highest performance you could. Josh. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay. Um, Silence isn't great for a podcast. That's all. Well, no, it it does kind of suck, but. uh, (sighs) What did they tell us at the tech day? Okay. No, it's, it's, it's not so much that I think where I'm looking at is where they want to hit product cycles versus what they have and what they can enhance from their previous stuff. Are you talking about Qualcomm or are you talking about ARM? Qualcomm. Okay. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of the answer to your question is that sure. they you know they sure they could lead out with something really amazing six to eight months from now. Most likely nine months from now. But you're missing out on I think six months would five, be a struggle. Six months yeah. of, of yeah, well, it seems like they're already going to miss back to school for the most part this year if they're launching yeah, in the fall. Yeah, they're hitting the holiday, and they're trying to yeah, get an fair. edge. They're trying to get an edge on probably their competitors as well, because when when the latest ARM seventy six comes out, that's like within ten percent of Skylake IPC. In theory, for a, I hope. In, in theory, yeah. yeah. Whether or not they can get the software stacks to, yeah. to be able to uh, support that and have an, an overall coherent, cogent product available, that's that's another question <laughs> altogether. But in theory, the latest ARM stuff, is, is it's, it's really solid. Mm-hmm. They have taken their design to another level that we have not seen. And they have um, – they've kind of – Avoided the pitfalls like uh, that Samsung did. Samsung did a really wide product with their latest Exynos. But unfortunately, when you have a really wide product like that, you get really good burst performance. But if you have anything that will really leverage extended performance on that CPU, you're going to be hitting TDP limits. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really yeah. quickly, and your performance is going to drop dramatically. It doesn't matter how wide it is; you're 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 hitting the TDP envelope. You're going to have to clock down, and everything then kind of suffers, even though you've got this really wide design. But ARM certainly did avoid that with a little bit more focused, more efficient, and a design that is more enhanced for kind of. You know, consistent um, workloads, okay. something that is not bursting. But anyway, uh, I know that's going well beyond where we were talking. But no, it's super yeah, I think I think Qualcomm is is just trying to beat the rest of its competition with something a little bit higher end than what they have now. I think and every, introduce it before holiday. Every every not this holiday. No, he's talking about eight fifty. Oh, you're talking about eight fifty. I yeah. think. Okay, yeah. 850, 850 will be out this holiday, I think. Um, and whatever, you know, Snapdragon 1000 will, will be sometime in 2019. I think what's interesting to me is, like, everybody understands that Intel's in this rut. And if you're going to go at <laughs> you them, gotta you, go. you go now, right? <laughs> if your goal is to get market share, to get mind share, to, to, to really create a brand around stuff, this goes for AMD as well. Because um, well, you're pretty much guaranteed that, None of the major manufacturers are going to be building anything new with an Intel inside of it because nothing well, they've got new, nothing yeah. to put in it. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. We'll see what uh, we'll see. What Snapdragon one thousand comes up with, although I don't think for a while will we actually really know. Uh, Jeremy, you posted a quick bit about the Corsair K seventy RGB MK two and the Strafe MK two. Um, you got to say RGB at least three more times. Sorry, RGB MK two with RGBs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and boy, does it have RGBs, as you can see. So the bigger one, the K70 that you're looking at there is fancy. It's got uh, aluminum like on it. I like the color. And a nice yeah. little wrist pad. So it, it's the big, hefty one. And you can pick and choose your caps. Uh, they're all the Cherry MXs. You can get the reds, the browns, the blues, the speeds, or the brand new silent ones. Because along with this is the first time that they've actually been releasing their MX Silence for uh, Corsair boards. And they say roughly, 
about 30% quieter typing with the exact same bottoming out feel that you'll get uh, on the mm. other uh, MX Reds. Okay. So, you know, interesting. If the big hefty one isn't more your style, then you've got the more polite, the MX Silent, which, as you can see, because you can guess by the name, uses the silence, although you can get the MX Red. It's plastic, and it doesn't come with a fancy wrist rest, so you'll also be able to pick it up a little bit cheaper. Apart from that, it's almost the exact same. Uh, and they both have fancy precision molded double shot keycaps. Hell for, yeah, they Because do. apparently that's a thing now. That's really <laughs> important to people. It is. Oh, man. Interesting. Uh, prices we have? Not let's... really announced. Okay. Right. They, they were sending me off to a page on their oh. web store that wasn't loading at the time. Well, maybe also not loading is my... Ryan seems to have crashed the hey. computer. Oh, wait, nope, oh. there it goes. It woke up. Just needed a minute. Uh, all right. Yeah, still, they're still not listing them. New GeForce drivers out to 398.36. When are we going to hit 400? I guess maybe a new GPU launch. Yeah, <laughs> actually, now that I think about it. That sounds about right. Yeah. That, haven't they been like 370 since like four generations ago? I don't know. Yeah, but we're pretty close Ooh. now. <laughs> I'll skip it and go to the GeForce X. Uh, so this is for <laughs> Ubisoft's Crew Are they going to have a pretty name for 400 series? No. Yeah, GeForce 400 graphics drivers. Remember Detonator drivers. back in the day? And, they took that uh, away, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They need another clever name. Do you, do you think NVIDIA feels like they need to put effort into branding at the moment? <laughs> no. Judging about how the zero branding they've done in the past year. Um, anything in particular stand out on this driver to anybody? Uh, um, fixes a Gears of War 4 thing. Okay. Apparently. Some the crew too. I'd like to have. Um, <laughs> also is also running, or NVIDIA is running a bundle deal right now where you get the crew two standard edition free with a 1080, 1080 Ti purchase. No. Or a G4, no. no? A 1080, 1080 Ti. Oh. Or a GeForce gaming desktop or a GeForce gaming notebook. Okay. I thought I was saying a desktop with a 1080, 1080 oh, Ti. Yeah. But. Uh, it doesn't mention it in here, but the Battlefield 5 closed alpha starts tomorrow. So I don't know if there's any fixes in here for that or not. They don't mention it specifically. Going along but. with this, uh, GTX 1080 Ti Founders Editions were available on NVIDIA's web store for 700 bucks at most of the day, at least. I don't know if they finally sold out, but mm. by the time I looked at it, they're in stock for like eight hours already. Mm. So, you know. Graphics cards, guys. I don't think you should buy a 1080 Ti right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough call. <laughs> not for, not for that price. It's, it's a, they, they seem to have, um, you know, the rumors are mm. that they may have uh, overestimated GPU uh, I pre- demand. Yeah, I've been predicting this moment since the middle of 2016. <laughs> yeah. but, but even if they even if they did, if they do have 300000 in the warehouse, like the rumor is, we're not going to see price decreases. Um. They've never done that in the past when they've had excess GPUs, like certain well GPUs that were very hot. Well, you're talking about failed. the GTX 480 where they had a warehouse full of those yeah. for years after the yeah, 500s but they were came out. Yeah, these are still good parts. I, I'd be, I'd but be they're curious. not going to sell them for 200 bucks less. You well, don't you know, think what, even what if they're the do. next chip comes out? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're going to ex- extend out when the next chip comes, and they're going to sell because... Unfortunately, the competition has nothing better to offer. It's true. I mean, Vega is a good part. It's got its issues. But but it's already kind of in a losing battle, and if NVIDIA comes out with something marginally better, it's going to be in a more losing Yeah. I mean, let's say you have an 1180 that has about the performance levels of 1080 Ti for... 750. Let's say we the rumors that they're going to increase the price on uh, across the board are true because they can get away with it. And 750. What do you sell 1080 Ti for then? You're saying what if an 1180 comes out and it's the same performance of a 1080 Ti but fifty dollars more? Yeah, that's been about the rumors is that it will be the same performance, but that would be dumb. Oh, you're you're wow. going to buy up as many 1080 Ti's. Sorry, and better be performance than a 1080 Ti. Okay, I mean. so you can either say same performance as 1080 Ti yeah, for I the price of the of the 1080, uh, which would be what 499. Well, the the price the, the rumors are that the performance and the price will be higher than a 1080 Ti. Cool, because they can get away with the price increase because yeah. they don't really have any high end competition. I don't know. I don't even think about it. All I know is Jensen said it'll be a very long time from now. Uh huh. So <laughs> we'll go with that. That's what the man says. Uh, Corsair. 
is buying Elgato. Has bought. Elgato. Has bought Elgato. These Domo are- Elgato, Mr. Roboto. No, nah, close. These are private companies, so we don't have to wait for anything to be approved. Corsair is buying the streaming portion of Elgato. Apparently, Elgato Did, also didn't has... You, didn't you test out some Elgato cards, or was that black magic? I tested out the 4K60 Pro here last November. This the image first. Oh, right okay. here from that review. Yeah. Elgato has a weird history that I kind of go into a little bit here. They started in 2002. Because in Spanish, that is the cat. Yes. The Cato. They started as a Mac-only TV tuner company. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And then they sold off like the TV tuning brand. They had ITV, which is a good software on the Mac side, and they got into this gaming stuff. They also got into IoT, connected home stuff, which that's the brand they're keeping and renaming Eve, I believe, Eve Systems. Okay. But they're selling the gaming brand, which is responsible for capture cards, the stream deck, the little control module with yeah, the keys those, on those the LED display outs on it, the pop-up green screen. It's all going to Corsair. I think it's a good fit for them. Uh, they it seem just, like similar companies. Yeah, and it, and it, it adds another tab to the Corsair.com website yeah. of um, things that they will have, right? Um, Corsair is an odd company. It's not odd in a bad way, but it's just, you know, we had some we had some visitors from Corsair here recently, and, you know, it's like, I, I knew significantly more about the history of this company than they, because they were newer, right? Maybe, you know, five, eight years, something like, yeah, no, I remember when you guys only did memory. Um, they're like, yeah, that was a long time ago. I was like, yeah, I've been doing this for like almost 19 <laughs> years, as it turns out. Yeah. Um, my very first ever meeting with a rep at an event was a CES in 1999 with Corsair. So nice. we go way back. I, I think this would be a good fit. I think the Elgato hardware is pretty good. Software is yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, the, the whole stream deck Corsair and Corsair's great keyboard association. business makes sense. Yeah. Their and, and with this, this also is kind of, this is this is not just PC. This is, a lot of people use this for capturing game console mm-hmm. stuff. So mm-hmm. this gets Corsair, you know, their first kind of step into there so they can start selling headsets and all that accessory stuff to, yeah. to, to that market as well. So I think this is a good And soon it will be link compatible so they can all blink in synchronization. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was uh, the Twitter account from Elgato that picture sent out a picture of a, a prototype already in development where they had scotch taped LED lights to their L to this 4K 60 Pro card <laughs> as a joke about the RGBing of everything which is funny I because laugh. the capture card I've been looking at this week actually has RGB on it it's from, from, different, uh, from Avermedia. a different company from yeah. Avermedia has RGBs on it so yeah it'll L- happen L- yeah LEDs are cheap yeah Oh, this picture right here. Sorry. (laughs) What are those lights? They look like arcade buttons almost. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what that is. They must have watch batteries on them. Yeah. I don't know. All right. uh, What else we got? Or no, Scott did this. Summer Games Done Quick 2018 has begun. This is what? A um, speed running. Speed running games. Marathon. Spyro the Dragon. Banjo Tooie. Banjo Kazooie. Banjo Tooie. These guys go for like a week or something. Like it's. Let's see. Right now they're playing really Super Mario 3D amount. Land. I think. I think they've passed now fifteen oh, no, million dollars Cuphead. lifetime ah, donations. Cuphead. Uh, that's good, Cuphead. Uh, they're at six hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars right now yeah. for this year's thing. That's we're, pretty awesome. We're just getting started. That's pretty great. Until his next fingers Sunday. are hurting already. He's shaking his hands. <laughs> nah. He's been playing for 29 hours. Last year, Summer Games Done Quick set a record with $1.79 million raised. I assume for charity, right? Yeah. Okay. Doctors Without Borders. (laughs) Hey, I don't don't know what I know. Uh, So that's pretty cool. Check that out. Scott posted that up on the site. Um, We have... uh, uh Uh-oh. What's going on here? Uh Oh, you broke it. This machine and I are not getting along today. Micron announces GDDR6 production in full swing. Also not conveniently timed to new graphics cards, maybe or maybe not coming out. Do, do you know how long GDDR5 has been around? No, tell us. Three weeks. I, I think? think the HD4800 series was the first GDDR5 no, That can't product. be right, can it? I don't know. You can Google it and figure it out. I, I you sure could. Earlier. It was... Yeah, it's been around for a long time. 
I mean, GDDR5X was pretty recent, but boy, that, that's mm. been a long reign for a single memory architecture. I think this story, Jeremy, says eight gigabyte packages, but it should be eight gigabit, probably. <laughs> Right? Are they one gigabyte per module, or are they eight gigabytes per package? I believe it was eight gigabytes per package. Sorry, I was just looking up the... Well, that would uh, mean they'd only need two packages to get a 16 gigabyte 16 card. Gigs. That seems yeah. probably okay. not likely. Hmm. It's probably supposed to be eight gigabytes. Where is it here? Double check. Um, Come on, part catalog. You can load. I've got faith in you. Which applications are the best fit for GDDR6? Game consoles, graphics cards, networking and routing, autonomous Level driving. Level 5 driving. Crypto, crypto mining. Crypto mining. Meh. HPC acceleration. Meh. Hey, you got to put it on there, man. Uh, you know, this is something Micron announced GDDR6, or was it Samsung? Did Samsung announce first? I think they announced production of GDDR6 recently as well. I think that's what it was. Um, I think we're we'll going to need a lot of we're going to see this soon. Well, I don't know how much. I don't know how much. It depends on if, if you're making if you're NVIDIA and you're going to use that on all of your new cards or just on some of your new cards. I think they're probably going to use all of their new yeah. cards because yeah. HBM still isn't readily. No, available. no, no. They're definitely not going to use HBM, but will they use G5X on their mainstream? Yeah, if they're refreshing that. So, yeah, yeah you're right. Micron mice typed and I. Continued that mistyping. Fair they enough. sent out a correction. Oh wow! Fair enough. Yep, bastards. All right, GDDR6 guys, it's coming. It's going to make things faster. Uh, Thermal Take launches the Engine 17 cooler for small form factor systems. This is um, it's the levitating one. The damn cooler yeah, we've been seeing for a decade. I, I saw now. it like a Cooler Master suite, right? Like three years ago, four years ago. I honestly don't remember. Because I think cooler it was Rajiv thermal was take. the one who was showing us to us, yeah. and it was a different company that they were working with for us. Wasn't it Sandia Labs that had the? Well, they were the original. The original. In, the research, and then Cool Chip, I think, was the spinoff of like commercialization. Yeah, I think that's right. So basically how this works is this heat sink rotates this way and is acts, it's both a heat sink and the fan at the same time. And then it blows air through these outside fans that are stationary, not moving, um, and it allows you to get effectively uh, uh, better cooling and smaller form factors. Although you have to, you know, the, the, the tech here is you have a heat sink that's moving that can still transfer heat to it. Um, and actually, it looks like it's like on Amazon already. 70 watt low profile Intel 60 nanometer or 60 nanometer, 60 millimeter uh, CPU cooler. Check the alternatives there. Uh, the budget. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, that is definitely an alternative. So is that. There you go. Uh, so you can see here what the low profile value is there. Uh, yeah, this is clearly what we were seeing before. Because the the heat transfers, so those two uh, uh, pieces it uses essentially air bearings. Yeah, yeah. They, and heat transfer. The 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 grooves there fit inside each other, right? And those spin in proximity, and that's how the heat transfers from this plate to this plate, and then and that's how babies are made. And, <laughs> and then Pretty much. to the surrounding area, and then there you go. So it doesn't not necessarily in this case. Right, no. is that example? Uh, but the idea is good in that for small form factor, this makes sense. You know, if you have a discrete GPU, totally unnecessary, except that it kind of looks cool, I guess. And it's not. I wonder expensive. how that sounds, and how how many RPM is that spinning? Um, I honestly don't remember how it spinners. sounds. I think oh, wait, did, it says here forty blades spin at fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred. We did RPM. a video That's on this yeah. back when it was a cooler master product. We did a video on it. Yeah, I just yeah. don't. I don't know if it gets a wobble a going to level. it. It's going to be I a mean, bad thing. There was a specific noise to it. I don't remember it being heinous or anything. It's a 9 CFM fan, essentially. Um, yeah. I, I can see that working really nice in clean laboratory conditions. Mm -hmm. give, it a, give it a year in my house and it's going to be gummed up. It's rated at 11 to 23 dBA. According to this. That's a 
pretty big range there. So now it is it is kind of TDP limited. You can't put an 8700K on here. I think it's what it is say, 70 watts. So you can do like the 8700T. You could do uh, the Ryzen 5 2400, uh, you know, GE. And in any of the 65 watt parts, you'd kind of be right on the edge with. Yeah. Um, it, it's super interesting that we saw this What cool was the date of that video? It was, it was January 7th, 2015. It 2015. was Cool Chip and Cooler Master. Yeah. Showing now off. it's cool chip and thermal tick. Yeah. Ha. Huh. So like uh, you know, be interesting to see what the politics was of that. Did who dropped who? Who dropped who? And here's kind of a oh, this is a Rosewell variant. Interesting. Oh wait, this is not the first one of these. No. They had the engine twenty seven, which is I don't know how that's any different, really. It's bigger, isn't it? It's still a seventy watt TDP. Yeah, but this one's a 35, Ooh. isn't it? No, it's, well, yeah, you're right. The one I was looking at on Amazon was a 27. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're right. This is 35 watt TDP, hence the 8700T yeah, and the 2400 the G. Yep. 27 yep. Link. yep. I'd still like to try one of these out. I'd just like to see them spin. Don't stick your finger in that one, guys. Eh. That'd be bad. All right, our last news story of the day. I have no idea what the hell it's about. Somebody's going to tell me just about look at it. this <sighs> this thing. Yep. What is it, Jeremy? It, it's it's an RGB device, which you can also type on. Yeah, but what, there's no screen on it. What am I looking at? What is it's, this? It's a keyboard. It's a USB or Bluetooth keyboard for people who need to, you know, bring a full monitor into a Starbucks. and. It's a mechanical typewriter. Yes. No, it's, it's a mechanical <laughs> Hip, keyboard. Hipsters rejoice everywhere. See? See? I'm not the only one. Well, no, of course. That's exactly who it's for. Yeah. yeah. And to make it more fun, so the, the, the paper advancer there on the right-hand side yeah. is actually a volume button. So you can raise and lower your volume and mute it by tapping it. Are you supposed to and put your tablet here? Like, is phone. that... Well, I don't know. Maybe it's for carrying? So you can whack Maybe somebody over the head with it after there? they make fun of you for it? Yeah. And then your carriage return swaps you between uh, USB and Bluetooth. <laughs> and hopefully makes like a whirring noise while you're doing it. And is that company name pronounced New Keys? K N E W K E Y S. No. And hence uh, my comment with the mechanical, mechanical keyboard. Que keyboard. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, Kibbered. Can you believe that a Waston reviewed an esoteric mechanical keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. odd that in that house they would be looking like, at keyboards <laughs> like this. Yeah, and, and he loved it apart from the fact that the Bluetooth didn't work so well. Well, that's an important part. Are there yeah. cherry compatible key stems? Yeah, are they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You couldn't really like replace them or use other ones because of the form factor. I don't think like it just wouldn't work very well. Interesting stuff. <laughs> Does it sweet. make the sounds of a keyboard of a typewriter? Uh, there's a SoundCloud link in there. I haven't yes, listened to it. There. But does it sound like a typewriter? Like you'd have to have. I mean, it no, tries, but no. It has to be like an app on the <laughs> on the on the PC that like plays that as you're typing in. Didn't Tom Hanks have that app? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he released like a word processing app for iOS that like emulated different typewriters because he's super into typewriters yeah. apparently. You know, Great. If you have money. Hey, look at that ad on... Uh, <laughs> 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 nice. Nice. Can I interest you guys in a hot dog down a hallway t-shirt? I got to screenshot that one for later. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody. That is going... No, wait. Hold on. Oh, I didn't didn't even pick anything. Let's go to you guys first. You never pick anything. Uh, I'm too busy, you know, opening Don't up lie. tabs Dude, and even, stuff. Even I picked something within the last five minutes. <laughs> Let me guess. Because I totally forgot. All right. Jeremy, go ahead. Oh, no, I stole the SSD from... I was going to so ask Josh if Josh could. did the SSD. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, so go for it. Up here in Canada, a 970 Evo uh, NVMe 500 gig drive for 260 but if you put in that little code, it drops an extra 10 bucks off it. That ain't so, bad. 50 cents gig, not too damn bad for up here. All right. Not for Canadians. Supposed to say it like this, Josh. Not for Canadians. Ugh. Okay. 
Fair. Do you want some poutine Depending on, on the that deal you got down south? You might get it cheaper up here and ship it down. Yeah. All right, Josh, what do you got? Me. What do I? You know, I've heard about these guys for the last couple of weeks. TCL. They're a, a TV company out of China who are apparently producing some really good things at really low prices. So if you want a 55 inch 4K true HDR TV with, um, you know, zone backlit lighting, 650 bucks is dirt cheap. And it comes with Roku. It's yeah. just. I nice. mean, it may not be perfect, but for the price, it's pretty damn impressive. It's it's gotten to be in the past couple of years that TCL is essentially the only TV option worth buying under a thousand bucks. Why is the font for Amazon.com on your page very different than the font for Amazon.com on my page? Well, all Been my packets are going through well. China, so that might affect it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, yes, got it. All right, uh, next up, Ken. Uh, so I alluded to this earlier. I'm taking a look hmm. at two new, newly released this week capture products from Evermedia. This is sort of the lower end one, but still really interesting. It's a 4K USB 3.1 capture card that's capable of doing 4K 30, which is yeah, is all okay. right. I mean, not anything too impressive, but. It has a display pass-through so that you can still hook up your TV or your monitor or whatever that supports 4K60 with HDR enabled. So I was capturing at 4K30 over USB to a PC while displaying hmm. on the PG27UQ at 4K60 HDR from the Xbox, which is pretty damn cool. So you don't have the ability to capture an HDR, which, as we'll talk about in the review for these capture cards, is still a bit dodgy. Sure. Uh, but you can still you don't have to sacrifice anything on your own personal display to stream or capture. And another cool thing about this is it supports the it is a UVC device, which means it needs no driver. It only works on Windows, but it needs no driver. Essentially, it emulates a Windows webcam, so it shows up in any application where a webcam would show up. <laughs> if you want to send video natively to Skype from a console or a camera or something like that, just plug huh. it in and go. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's got a USB-C port on it, for whatever that's worth. Plus, it's Live Gamer Ultra. Yeah. Ultra, ultra, ultra. So I'm going to have uh, more more thoughts about this and their new PCIe capture this card one. here. Yeah. The one that actually does capture 4K60 HDR probably next week for the next podcast. There's an issue I'm working through with every media. RGB. Yeah, they're RGB. very impressive. And RGB. Like 300 bucks for 4K60 HDR, mm. which doesn't really exist, and the Elgato 4K60 capture card is 400 bucks. Hmm. So you're adding stuff. the ability to pass through and record HDR is 100 bucks less. Hmm. So, all right, all right. Um, I didn't I didn't come up with anything. I, I the, the the oh it's not even on Amazon. The Asus monitor is not even on there yet. Um, so I, I will say uh, again to reiterate on the PG27UQ, if you have a lot of money and and no sense, you don't need sense if you got money. Yeah. Uh, and you really like gaming on on the PC. This is this I is mean, this really, is still the really best. Like yeah, you got to really really like it. Um, the, uh, the G-Sync two? HDR stuff is great. Yeah, it's not in stock for another couple of weeks. Have well, they, so have they actually been selling these yet? If you go to Micro Center, you can buy both the Asus and the oh, Acer. In stock. They're in That's stock. Right. Uh, they don't have you. You mentioned somebody. You mentioned something about going there maybe to try a demo up, but then somebody went there and said that they had nothing set up. It was just like the desktop, which is the worst thing. So yeah, maybe you could convince someone there to actually run some damn games on it, or they'll figure their shit out. At what Micro AMD Center. needs to do is get that HDR demo out really soon so that they can run it on these G-Sync <laughs> HDR displays and show oh, it. Oh, such a good idea. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure AMD would be ecstatic about that. Um, but yeah. And Micro Center has good return policies. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think if you're willing to spend the money and you don't have instantaneous buyer regret, um, buyer's remorse. Oh, I, I have buyer regret on the burgers I buy. So <laughs> That's yeah. for a different just, reason, though. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, so that's going to be it for us for this week, guys. Thanks for so joining us. So what was your us. pick again, Ryan? Uh, it was the Asus ROG Swift PG27UQ. But you can't actually recommend anyone really buy it, though. It's my recommendation. It's my pick of the week. Sometimes you recommend... So this is like Schrodinger's cat. Sometimes we pick things yeah. you don't like. We both pick is it the pick, pick alive it. or dead? <laughs> Once you look inside the box, the answer is known, and it totally mm. screws it up. Uh, but so, you can return it. That's true. <laughs> or the dead cat. Either one. Um, PCpro.com slash podcast. Go there. Find links to all the show notes, the stories we talked about, RSS feeds, uh, video files, uh, how to subscribe to the mailing list so you know when we do the live shows, all that stuff, PCpro.com slash podcast. And uh, I guess this is the end of June. We'll be back some – oh, wait. No, we won't be back next week. Next week's the 4th of July. Yeah. And I think everybody's going to be somewhere I'm going to be out on my front line watching freedom. fireworks. Yeah. And I think trying to do a podcast while fireworks are going off all around us here would be – a poor decision as well. So we probably won't have an episode, uh, but we'll do like a mailbag. We'll do an extra special mailbag next week. Sure. I, don't know, I just made that up. What's well, number 50, isn't it? Ooh. Uh, this week's number this week. 50. Oh. When I record tomorrow will be number 50. This so, is number 49. 49, church. dude. This week's 49? That makes sense. Whatever. No, no, that was what I recorded. That's what you did. You know, yeah. So we're going to kill, we're gonna like kill the mailbag. Sort of. We're going to kill the mailbag at episode 50. We're going to kill the podcast episode 500, and then we just won't have to do any more oh, thank God. video stuff. Oh. So it'll be good. Uh, so that's it for us. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>